Welcome back to Biology. My name is Mr. Kowalski. Uh, we've been talking about evolution. We're actually in this fifth section uh, talking about evolution. Today we're going to talk about types of selection and types of evolution. Okay, so take a look at this picture. What do you see? Uh, I know I see a bunch of puppies, uh, but they're all of different breeds of dog. So where do they come from? How come I have different breeds of dog? Or in general, where did dogs come from? Well, believe it or not, if it was up to nature, dogs would not be here. Dogs would still be their ancestors, which was wolves. The reason dogs are here is because humans, you know, they took wolves in or a certain uh, group of wolves that were a little less scared or less skittish of humans. And, uh, you know, the, the wolves got food and shelter from the humans and the humans then took them and used them for different things like protection. So they bred then those wolves for certain traits, whether it was hearing so they knew when, uh, when, uh, when bad things were coming, or whether it was for loyalty, you know, they got rid of the ones that bit the hand that feeds, so to speak. So we picked their traits, and therefore we got the different dog breeds that we have. So this is known as artificial selection. It's when humans choose the traits of other organisms. Now we do it for our own benefit, dogs and horses. Sometimes we do it for the benefit of all. You know, uh, agriculture, cows, pigs, chickens, they're much bigger than they used to be because we keep breeding those traits. And then in agriculture, you know, seedless watermelon and seedless grapes, those should not occur in nature. Uh, but we keep those vines going and we keep those uh, different fruits and vegetables going because they're bigger or they're juicier or we get more out of them, etc. Okay, so that's artificial selection. In this situation, you see two different types of birds. But in reality, it's the same type of bird. The difference is one's brighter color than the other. This is known as sexual selection, when you choose traits based on mating. Birds, for example, rams uh, fighting for territory, and then they're choosing their their mates based on the territory that they live in. And this also occurs with apes, wolves, and some might even argue that humans do some sexual selection. And then natural selection, you know, where your survival of the fittest, uh, the best traits are chosen based on the environment that you live in. Uh, but there's actually three different types of natural selection, uh, and the three types are stabilizing, uh, directional and then disruptive selection. And we're gonna give you an example of each and see if you can guess which one is which, okay? So lizards of South America, okay? Well, you notice these in this population of lizards, okay? We have our population here. We have an average tail length, a long tail length of a few, and then a short tail length of some. Now the short tail lengths, you know, they have trouble balancing because they don't have the longer tails to balance with, so they die off. The longer tails get grabbed by, <laughs> I apologize for that, by the, uh, by the predators and things like that, so they die off. So which trait gets selected for? It's the average number. And this is known as stabilizing selection, okay? Next, uh, sorry, the average is best, okay? Clams in shallow water. Well, in shallow water, there's murky areas and there's sunny areas. In the sunny areas, okay, and again, average is what we have the most of in our population. In the sunny areas, which clams are going to get eaten are the darker clams because they're going to stand out in the sunny sands, okay? In the shadowy areas, the brighter shells or clams will get eaten and the darker ones will survive. But in both situations, the middle of the road clam is the least selected for. It's the one that gets eaten the most. So what will happen to our population over time is the two extremes will grow and the middle of the road will disappear. This is known as disruptive selection, okay? Next. Giraffe necks, okay? Now, obviously, giraffe necks we know are long, okay? But in reality, in the beginning of their population, the average was best, okay? Over time, uh, the longer necks were selected for, and this is known as directional selection, okay? Because one direction, one extreme is the best. Good. So, as a review, we have three different types of selection, and then there are three different types of natural selection. If you have any questions, make sure you contact me. Now, let's move on to types of evolution. There are three types of evolution that we're going to cover. There's divergent evolution, where one species becomes two different species over time. Lions and tigers were once the same thing. That original ancestor, as their population grew, they had to find different areas to go uh, find food in so they didn't have to compete with each other. One started to hunt in the jungles, one stayed in the savannas. Therefore, we got lions and tigers. Lions in the savannas, tigers in the jungles. We know that they're related because these two species can actually still reproduce. But the reason we don't consider them the same species is because their offspring, a liger or a tigon, if it's a male tiger and female lion, can't reproduce. It is infertile. So lions and tigers are then considered their own species. But we know they're related. They have enough DNA that they can still reproduce. African and Indian element, uh, elephants, excuse me. 
completely different species. Looks very similar, but they can't reproduce with one another. They're two different species because they live in two different environments. Chimps and humans, another example of divers. Once we're the same thing, I've split into two. Okay? This causes speciation or the formation of species, which we'll talk about in our next lesson. Convergent evolution. Well, look at these three animals here. They have very similar bodies. They all have fins, uh, pointy noses, streamlined bodies, uh, similar tails. But believe it or not, these are three completely different types of animals. The top one is a fish. The middle one is actually a reptile called an ichthyosaur. And the bottom one is a dolphin. Now, obviously, ichthyosaurs are no longer here. Uh, they died out along with the rest of the dinosaurs. But the reason they all look the same is because they fill the same niche. So the environment has selected these traits based on this niche, and so therefore their species seem to be converging or becoming the same thing. Now, they will never be the same thing because they're different species, and they won't be able to reproduce. Uh, but it seems like they're the same. Bats and birds, another good example of converging. Last one, coevolution. That's when two species seem to evolve in response to one another. Okay? Hawks hunt rabbits, so the faster rabbits survive, so the population of rabbits gets faster. Since the rabbits are faster, the faster hawks will then survive because they're the ones that can catch the rabbits. So rabbits have to blend into their surroundings, to, and they're the ones that have the better chance of survival. So the hawks with the better eyesights then are the ones that get selected for and have the better chance of survival. So that's coevolution. Uh, plants adapting or uh, having flowers, that's a type of coevolution with bees. Uh, cheetahs uh, evolving in response to gazelles. Gazelles are able to not only just be fast, but also very shifty. So the cheetahs that had thicker tails and could throw those tails in order to change direction were the ones that were selected for, and so they evolved in response to the gazelles. So again, coevolution is when you are kind of going along and uh, reproducing in, in a way so that you are evolving with another species. Okay, so divergent, co. Excuse me, divergent, convergent, and then coevolution side by side there. All right. Last thing, the bottleneck effect. Okay. The bottleneck effect kind of works like this. Take the, these little guys, for example. So I've got my little red faces in my population. I've got some blue faces in my population, and I've got a green face in my population. Now, over time, if nothing changes, if this population is in equilibrium, no natural selection will occur, and I will continue to see reds and blues in this kind of same ratio, and then the occasional green. But let's say there's a disaster of some kind. Oh my gosh, you know, the heavens came down and volcanoes burst and, you know, tidal waves and earthquakes and typhoons and any other kind of disaster that you can think of. Now that is a disaster right there, okay? But after the disaster, this is the population that you're left with. Well, describe to me what will happen, what the, will the population look like from here on out? Well, before it was always red faces, a couple of blues, and maybe one green. But now it's mostly blues and uh, just a couple of reds. So what has happened is that in, during one generation, the population shrank, and then when the population regrew, it grew based on the alleles that were present. That's the bottleneck effect. Here was our population, got really skinny, got our small numbers, and now our alleles are all based on that small number population. Okay, that's, uh, this is another type of genetic drift where you move towards one type of allele that's selected for, okay? Founder effect is a type of bottleneck effect, okay? Instead of a disaster, maybe one population gets blown to a new island or gets separated somehow from the rest of the population. So the only the ones that are starting that population, that new founding colony, are the ones that will have the alleles present. So in the original population, we had reds and greens. In our founding population on our new island, there were only reds. So there will only ever be reds on that population or on that island. Okay? So that's the founder effect. Whatever you start with, that's what the population will look like from here on out. Think about maybe you know, the different uh, subspecies, if you want to call us that, of humans. You know, the European version, the Asian version, the African version, uh, you know, the Native Americans uh, and Americans, not just American. Uh, version, you know what I mean? Like they had similar traits to each other, but very different traits from others because they founded new areas and only reproduced with each other, and those are the traits selected for. Okay, so a lot to review there. Uh, types of evolution. Think about how it connects to the previous day. Think about homologous structures, analogous structures, things we talked about. How that kind of goes uh, with these types of things. Go so, quick review. We talked about types of selection, types of natural selection, types of evolution, and and then obviously. Oh, I apologize. I need to change this. The bottleneck effect and the founder effect. Okay. Next time we'll talk about speciation. I'm sorry.